I'm often asked what it was like being the daughter of John Pointer Wyatt. He was dynamic, he was witty, he was intelligent. It was absolutely brilliant being his daughter. My father, John Pointer Wyatt, was born in 1916 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. His parents were Charles Albert Wyatt and Ellen Pointer Wyatt. They had immigrated from Glossop, Derbyshire, and I was told that they immigrated because grandfather needed to find work. My grandfather did find work as a train conductor. He was the one that would walk up and down the aisles taking the money and the tickets from the passengers. And his wife was at home taking care of my father's older sister, Elsie, as well as him. Dad wanted to be a history professor, but my grandfather, his father, said you will be a doctor. It was a financial strain for my grandfather to put my father through university. Among the family papers, I found an envelope carefully marked in my grandfather's handwriting, invoices I paid for John's university, $110 in 1932. $159.50 in 1933, and that included a $5 fee for the year's laboratory. He entered the University of Manitoba in 1932 when he was 16 years of age and was a doctor by the time he was 22. He started his medical training on a fellowship under Sir Frederick Banting and William Boyd at the Banting Institute and at Harvard Medical School. Then World War II struck. He left his fellowship and volunteered for the war like many other Canadians. He served in the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps and in the Northwest European Theater as a consultant europathologist to the 21st Army Group. Mother had mentioned he was embarrassed being the youngest doctor in World War II, so he used to lie about his age and tell everyone he was 30 years of age. After several years of war, he asked my mother, Isabel Edith Gillespie, to marry. They married in their Army uniforms and honeymooned in Paris. After the war, they moved to Boston, and he was able to complete his Banting Fellowship. And that's where my oldest brother, Charles, was born. And then after the fellowship ended, they moved to St. Louis, Missouri, where Dad took a position as a professor and head of the Department of Pathology at St. Louis University, where he was involved in black lung research. His students had said he was an entertaining lecturer and renowned for his wit, way with words in the classroom. He was also the pathologist in chief for the coroner's department for the city of St. Louis. And the family grew. After Charles was born in Boston, then Gordon was born in St. Louis, Philip was born in St. Louis, finally me, and I am the youngest. In the summers, we used to go to a cabin in the Ozarks on the Jack's Fork River. I remember it had this big rope swing, and we'd pull it back and jump on and just swing out into the river and then let go into the splash of the water. The cabin didn't have an indoor toilet, just only the outhouse. His best friend, Davis Biggs, also had a cabin on the river, and we spent hours upon hours with the Biggs children, building lifelong friendships. Around 1964, we moved to Winnipeg, and Dad became the head of pathology at the University of Manitoba and completed more research. Yet I remember summers at one of his friend's cabins at Fox Lake in Lake of the Woods. It was an old Coeur de Bois cabin built on freshwater lake and quite rustic. No running water, no electricity. Moose and deer would come to the shore and drink water, and mother would lay out bed sheets or our clothes to be cleaned in the sun, and she'd have to chase the deer off because they'd be walking over our clothes and we had to watch out for bears. My brothers and I would fill buckets of water from the lake and carry them up the path to the cabin. We'd play in canoes for hours, pick blueberries, swim, then fish for trout and eat the fish for dinner. There was an old Spanish sword above the fireplace. And one day, my brother Philip decided to take his lunch, a peanut butter sandwich, out to the outhouse. There happened to be a bear that was eating blueberries just above the outhouse on a little cliff. Well, the bear wanted that peanut butter sandwich, came off the cliff and went to the outhouse and started shaking the outhouse. There was only one thing that Philip could do, which is yell, Dad! So Dad grabbed that old Spanish sword and went out and attacked the bear, pretty much chased it off without any injuries to bear, Philip, or the peanut butter sandwich. 
I remember brushing my teeth at the end of the dock and it turned around and there was a bear just standing at the shore side of the dock looking at me. I froze and the bear just sauntered away. It was wonderful to spend summers there. In the evenings, we would play cards, read comic books by kerosene light. I remember dancing with my father. We had an old phonograph with that crank up, the wind up hank crank on the side of the machine and I'd crank that up and I'd put on a 78 record and it would be a tune like In the Mood or String of Pearls and my father and I would dance. In 1974, he was offered a position at Lexington, Kentucky to head up the Tobacco and Health Research Institute. Dad was a specialist in pulmonary diseases research. He had published over 100 articles covering viruses and diverse lung injuries. The boys grew up as I did and we all gather in Kentucky for Christmas. Still teasing one another, hiding our faces away from the camera, or just enjoying being each other's company. I was visiting California last year in 2018 and my husband Lynn and I attended a wine tasting festival. We ran across a fellow who was in his 70s and he mentioned he had been a pathologist. So Lynn said, well, do you know Dr. John Pointe Wyatt? And the, the pathologist answered, John Pointe Wyatt? I've read all of his articles. I've studied his work. He is a rock star. He is a rock star in the medical field. My father, the rock star. It was absolutely brilliant being his daughter.